all right guys welcome to another video um, this video we're gonna go over some basic stuff uh, so if you already understand the title um, in other words like if you understand what a clout flat is supposed to do what a hard flat is supposed to do or in, in a soft squat then you know there's no point in you watching this video you already know but I figure I might as well drop a video explaining those uh, particular zones what are they supposed to do I've gotten a couple of questions uh, aimed at this particular area to get a better understanding on what they do so I figure I might as well drop a video on it on the screen here you have a pretty decent diagram uh, that kind of you know gives the names of the particular areas on the field so as you can see you know you have your tackle box here and a little bit outside of that you have your hook area here and that extends uh, 12 yards past the line of scrimmage that they have here okay and then as you extend out you have the curl area uh, which extends to just outside the numbers and then of course you have your flat area from that line out to the sidelines you know and as you extend further out as you can see you can see the uh, two seam areas and etc so let's go ahead and go to some video here so maybe I can draw what they what they had on this screen So you know that's actually 10 yards so that, let's go a little bit further back up to here so you know this would be based upon the diagram I mean there's there's little discrepancies here and there but you know I'm just trying to get you to understand the point so you know, your hook you know, your curl area and then your flats okay and this would be like oh, I'm sorry this would be like the seams and etc I would argue some points here but it's just a baseline um, so let's go ahead and, and run we're gonna take a look at clout flat and hard flat what are the differences okay so I believe I did something here let me see yeah yeah hard flat okay so what we have going on here the route combinations on that's why it's good to do this by a two by two set because you can see the difference between the two on the same play as long as you have the same route combination on both sides so I should have motioned this guy out to get more to a true mirror to this side but you know it still rains the same so this guy's gonna run like a little curl pattern kinda and then this guy goes into the flat and then you have the same deal on this side of the field okay now your clout flat is going to defend the deeper areas of the flat first and then rally to um, he'll rally to things in the flat second things underneath Okay, your hard flat is going to play things in the flat underneath hard first and theoretically if there's nothing attacking the flat like let's say this guy blocks and this guy goes up field and this guy goes up field he should uh, back up and try to get depth to play more like a cloud flat right so let's go ahead and play this watch the differences in the two I'll go to the replay so again we have the same route combination on both sides let's take a look at the cloud flat side first and you'll see how he'll play deeper and more in the window of the curl and once the ball is thrown underneath that's when he rallies underneath to the flat pattern underneath in the flats okay so he's his mindset is defend deeper first deeper and in intermediate on that side of the field and then rally to uh, you know routes thrown underneath in the flat second so now we're gonna take a look at the hard flat player and we'll see how with the same combination you see how he's playing harder underneath on that little flat pattern he wants to play against that first the priority is different if he was in cloud flat he would be more up here playing hard in the window of things like the curl uh, you know he would be 
in better position on corner routes, um, definitely out routes, that sort of thing. Okay, but because he's in hard flat and there's action in the flat, then he's uh, playing hard on those flat patterns. So now I want to show you something. We're going to we're going to see something that Madden has wrong. <laughs> so, of course, like, I, you know, I wanted to go ahead and just go ahead and jump to soft squat. But, you know, I noticed something wrong and I didn't know that Madden had this wrong because I never play hard flat corners ever. Um, I just never do it. I'd rather you be in clout flat or soft squat and in situations where people may play hard flat because maybe it's third and two or fourth and one, I'm not playing cover two anyways. Those are down in distances where I think cover two is terrible to play, right? So I just never play hard flat. To me, it's just useless. Um, but it can prove to be something that you can play if Madden had it coded correctly and they don't. And this is what I mean. So here we're going to show... What I have here, I'm going to have, maybe I should back up a little bit. I believe I have someone crossing across the field here. And then we have this guy running like a post. And this guy on the outside is running just a clear route up the field. Okay, so right now we have a clout flat called. And remember his responsibilities. He wants to play deeper in the flat first. You just continue to get depth and then rally to a throw in the flat second, right? So watch watch how beautiful he plays this. He just continues to get deeper and deeper and he's just in the window of that, that crosser from across the field. Now watch what happens when we put him, let's go ahead and watch the replay on that. I mean, that, that it's very rare I say this, but I mean, that's just beautiful, right? That's just perfect. Just continues to climb, continues to climb right in the window of that crosser. Now watch what happens when I put him to a hard flat. Okay, remember his responsibilities, right? If something is in the flat, he should play that extremely aggressively because that's his priority, the, the underneath flat first. And if there's nothing there, theoretically, if no one goes to the flat, let's say, you know, this guy goes upfield, which he is, this guy's traveling upfield and then this guy maybe stays in the block so you have no threat in the flat then there's no reason for you to be playing the flat the hard flat he should be backing up just like the cloud flat you know that's the purpose of adapting as a zone player there's no point in you like if you're going to sit here and play in the flat when we have no one going to the flat you might as well be playing way over here you might as well be in the stands. You might as well be, you know, sitting on the bench over here. There's just, you're, you're useless. You're making yourself useless, right? So when you're in hard flat and no one's there, back up like you're in cloud flat, right? So watch what happens. That's the way it should be, theoretically. Watch the way Madden has it coded. Same play, have him in hard flat. Is there anyone out here? Absolutely not. What should he be doing? He should be backpedaling as if he's in cloud flat now because he doesn't have a threat in the flat for him to um, aggressively attack, right? So, I mean, that's just something that just Madden has wrong. He should be underneath that throw there. So just keep that in mind. I mean, you know the differences between cloud flat and hard flat now, if you didn't know before, uh, but just know that uh, Madden has hard flat coded badly because, you know, if no one goes to the flat, he's just absolutely just useless. He's just there, you know, probably thinking about dinner for the night. I don't know what he, I mean, it's just, come on, man. It's just, they just, they're terrible. It is what it is, man. So let's go ahead and go to soft squat. Now, soft squat, let me back up a little bit. Okay, now we're in soft squat. There you go. So what the soft squat player does is let's number these receivers. You always number from outside in one, two, one, two, and this is a potential three, whichever side he goes. The soft squat player has his eyes on the number two. Okay. He's going to be playing originally on this guy with his eyes on the number two. 
And when this number one goes up the field, he's going to travel with him, and it's to bait the quarterback into thinking that this area of the, of the field will be open for the number two to attack, maybe with an out route or a flat pattern. Okay. Um, and your soft squat players are typically in cover two plays where there's a blitz involved. It's it's like a trap coverage. I think I want to. I think I have a video on that. Okay. This is where you will see the soft squat player. So whenever you see a cover two zone and has a blitz incorporated with it, go ahead and pick that play, and I guarantee you the corners on the outside are playing soft squat. Okay. Because you're trying to get pressure on the quarterback and force him into a quick throw hopefully into a quick hot out route by this guy and what this corner is doing you want to bait him into thinking that you're running upfield but your eyes are on the number two and when the number two runs like an out pattern or a flat anything to the flat he wants to jump that route and be very aggressive on that that's the point of the trap coverage okay in that instance the safety should be reading the number two as well when this guy goes to the out or the flat pattern the safety will know that the corner will now take that route and he has to top the route by the number one because now the corner is just going to let him go and release him off to the safety. Okay, so everything happens in unison with defenses. There's a reason why you have a soft squat player in this type of cover two scheme. There's a reason why you may have a, you know, curl flat player in cover three, but in different other cover threes, they're in seam flat. There's a reason because it works in unison with the defense and the design of the defense and what the de defense is trying to accomplish. Okay. Now, here's the thing. You may think, well, isn't that the same as hard flat, right? Playing aggressively in the flat. Not necessarily because this player, if this guy doesn't go to the flat, and let's say he goes upfield, then he converts into man-to-man -man coverage on this receiver when he goes upfield. So, you know, this is an adaptive zone here. It can be playing, you know, hard aggressive on an out pattern by this receiver here, or it can turn into man coverage on this receiver here. It's all based upon the route distribution by the offense. To me, those are the best defenses, the defenses that adapt to what the offense is doing, right? Like a defense that doesn't adapt is the one you saw in the play before where you're just sitting in hard flat no matter what. No matter what the offense is doing, you're just sitting in that area. So when you get into, you know, moments to where the offense is exploiting that, let's say I always know you're in hard flat. Well, now, you know, I could just re release receivers all over the field and just never have anyone go to the flat. There's no point in us going there because you'll defend it. But even when we don't go there, you're going to sit there anyway. So you're just a waste of a player when we send receivers and overload other parts of the zone, right? So that's why I truly believe that you should always have adaptive zones incorporated in your defense. I, I, I firmly never believe in, you know, something like we saw in the last play. I don't even know why that's coded into the game. I don't even think that that happens in the NFL. I think that corner would get yelled at in that situation where he's just hard flat and nothing's attacking that area. He just sits there. Okay. You, you never want to just defend grass. You want to defend opponents. So. I wonder if I have a route combination here to showcase the man-to-man. -man. Also, these uh, hook players here in trap uh, cover two, when you have a blitz incorporated and soft squat, they have the ability to convert to man-to-man -to -man coverage as well. So that's a difference between these players in, in vertical hook and cover two with a blitz as opposed to these players in like Tampa two. In Tampa two, they really don't convert to man-to-man -to -man coverage in this game from what I've seen. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but they do convert to man-to-man -man coverage based upon the routes by the number two. You know, if the number two were to go vertical here, then he's just going to match that route and play man-to-man -man against that route. Okay, so that's the beauty. Like, in the, you know, cover two trap, if they were to run four verts, you know, it almost turn into cover two man. So we're not getting exposed in the seam and you relieve a lot of pressure on these safeties deep down the hole because you're running with your men and it's not like they can exploit the safety if the safety works too far outside then you can just throw right into the seam because in regular tampa two you know these guys just carry the number two to a particular depth and then release them to the safety so to exploit that what you can do is you can just bring a player up the seam and maybe on a post pattern and then your outside receiver on a deep fade pattern and you just 
fire that thing in the hole over there. Right? So, just a little insight on... See, as you see, this guy, he was in the regular vertical hook, but because the number two took a vertical pattern, now he's just matching that route man-to-man. -man. Also, take a look at... Remember, this guy was in soft squat, remember? But the number two didn't go to the, the flat here. It may change because he's attached to the line of scrimmage. I have to check how they have it coded. But because he took a vertical pattern and he doesn't have an out by the number two, you can see now that he's in man-to-man -man coverage. He's not, he's not just sitting there in like a cloud flat or hard flat. He just converts to man. So that's the difference between soft squat. Um, hard flat and cloud flat. So here, I'm going to show you. you know, I got this guy going to an out. He's in soft squat. He's reading the number two, and you should see him release this guy and then jump on that out pattern. As you see there. So those are your three differences. And here's the point of the trap coverage. I'll go over this really quickly. You see how this guy's coming on the blitz? You know, if the quarterback is here and he sees that blitz coming, first thing, you know, especially if they have an, have an out called, he's going to think, well, this defender is probably playing man-to-man -man on him, and he was disguising. That's why he was inside, faking the blitz, whatever. And now since this guy is coming, you know, he has this defender. The receiver has that defender out leveraged to the out pattern. So it should be a gimme throw here. But that's what the defense wants him to think because when he throws that out pattern, you know, you have a corner waiting in the weeds, looking to jump that route, you know, get a really big hit, and in a better, in the best case scenario, get a pick. And think about it, if you were to get a pick on something like that, you're just going to the house. So, go ahead and watch, watch how the corner rides up, and then he releases him, and he jumps it. Um, another thing that the game has wrong that I don't like is the safety in this particular coverage. He will just continue to play like deep half. So in this route combination, you would like for him to kind of man up the number one once the corner releases him on that route combination. Because as you can see, I mean, he could just run a post and he'll just be wide open in his coverage because the safety's logic in it is bad. But at least you know the differences in those uh, three, three coverages. So I think I showcase it here again. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I did. So he should jump that out, and he does. Yeah, you know, when that guy goes out, your vertical hook will then just convert to playing, you know, your regular um, vertical hook zone. So here, let's go over the curl flat. Your curl flat and your hook curl. And you primarily get that stuff in like cover three like cover three sky okay so remember the areas where we had you know this was your hook you know and this was your curl areas I messed that up and then from that point forward out was like your flat area well look at the names of the particular zones this guy is in hook curl so at the snap of the ball, he'll be in hook and he'll continue expanding into the curl area, right? Same thing with this guy. You're in the hook and then you expand eventually into the curl area. You know, you're looking to widen and get depth. Now look at the curl flat, you know, it's the name of it. You originate in the curl area and you'll expand into the flat. And the curl flat uh, defenders are looking to play the deeper Inter intermediate routes first and then rally to the underneath stuff second so um, I should go to an offensive play to showcase this so you know look at how the defense you know it expands they're expanding out expanding out and they react to what the defense is throwing at them and etc So I want to show you how a curl flat player reacts to stuff in the flat. Again, you see how he's still, he's just expanding out into the flat, but he's, his mind is focused on defending the deeper stuff first, and then he'll rally 
to the flat pattern second after a throw. So right when we throw, you see how he's now attacking downhill to get to the to the receiver here. They will rally to the flat, the underneath stuff second. Make a tackle. And there you go. Now, I want to show you something. When you're in curl flat, watch how they react to, you know, one of the weaknesses of that is stuff like, you know, four verticals or, or routes into the seam. Because they expand, they expand. You know, your hook curl defenders will uh, carry defenders to a particular depth and then just let them go. And the problem with that is when you get two defenders attacking the seam, you put a lot of stress on this deep middle safety who has to defend a lot of grass in between the numbers. So that's one way um, you can exploit a deep middle safety in cover three uh, with, you know, hook curl defenders and curl flat defenders underneath who, aren't, who won't match routes, um, at least vertical routes. So as you can see here, I mean, that window's still a little tight there. But, you know, if you throw it in rhythm and et cetera, you know, that's how teams exploit cover three teams who are really in like a spot drop type of coverage where they don't match vertical routes in the seams. So now let's, the reason why I showed you that is because we're going to show the difference in seam flat players as opposed to curl flat players. You will primarily see seam flat defenders in cover three uh, zones where you have a blitz incorporated, as you see here. So I guarantee you, like when you go and pick a cover three defense and it has some type of blitz involved with it, some zone blitz or whatever, you're going to have instead of curl flat players, you're going to have seam flat players. And again, everything works in unison. There's a reason why it's a seam flat and not a curl flat. So, you know, what these players will do is they pretty much match vertical patterns, um, even an out pattern. They're matching the number two and number two here and number two here on vertical routes and outside routes etc they will end up just converting to man-to-man -man coverage okay and in certain route combinations like if this guy were going to go on like a drag or something like of that nature you know he may carry him but you know eventually he would just go into his zone responsibilities so it's an adaptive defense uh, designed to match particular routes and the reason why you want that in a particular coverage like this is because you're going to have a lot of voids in the defense, at least an extra void in the defense, because you're taking a traditional hook curl defender and you're bringing him on a pressure. So, you know, you add a void to the defense that the, the offense can attack. So you wouldn't want it to where, you know, this guy comes up, you know, he reroutes this guy and then this guy goes, continues up to seam. And then you just expand out, you know, it's, you don't have another hook curl defender to wall off a throw and et cetera. So you would much rather have that player, the seam flat player to match that route. So the, the quarterback can just rocket a, a easy ball in there. You don't want that, especially when you're trying to bring pressure, right? So let's watch this play. So both of those number twos, they should actually be matched. Okay, so I went to four verticals. So we have the seam flat called here, seam flat called here, and you should see them both convert to man-to-man -to -man coverage as you do. Everything works in unison with the entire defense. The defense, you should think of it like an organism, right? Something that adapts to, uh, you know, help itself out. You know, you don't want a part within your body that doesn't, work the way it should to help out the rest of the body you know there's a reason why you have seam flat called in a cover three zone blitz so here i think you know i'm not entirely sure but i think something is coded wrong here because in this instance you know because you're outside corners in a cover three blitz they pretty much go to man-to-man -to -man coverage when their receiver goes upfield um you know a take or they take a vertical route etc or even an, an out i think they should too um, with other exceptions, but here, you know, with this guy going in, I believe the corner is supposed to yell like under, 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 and that's to inform this guy that, Hey, my guy is going under, he's not going vertical. 
So despite this guy going vertical, you should go ahead and release him. You don't have to match that route. Just take the under route. The under's going underneath. Take that route and carry it. And you should go under, you know, match carry, well, carry deliver pr principle, where you should carry him until you're able to deliver him to a, another defender. If another de another defender along his drag isn't available to take him, then you just have to ride with him the entire way, right? And you should be cognizant of something coming out of the flat as you're riding that drag pattern, and then you just have to release him and take the flat, right? But I think the game just has it to where no matter what, the seam flat will just match a vertical r route despite what this player may be doing, as you'll see here. So yeah, I'm not sure if this is the way it should be. I don't think it is because you can see the problem here. You can just have this guy go on a drag, have the number two go up, and he'll just be wide open. No one takes him because I believe that should be the curl flat. I mean, the seam flat's responsibility. He should get an under call from the corner and then know that he's got to take that under pattern. And the reason why is because when this guy's going vertical, you know, your corner can now deal with that because of the under route. He doesn't have to match the under route. So he can just, you know, play outside leverage and get all over this uh, player going upfield from the number two but that's neither here nor there you know maybe i'm wrong but look at that drag pattern he's just wide open though you know even threw his hands up like please give me the ball but you know at least you see what a seam flat player is all about so here you'll see where he will just play zone because we have an immediate drag he kind of rides him a little bit and then he gets to his zone here so there's your differences between curl flat and seam flat and now I want to show you, I guess I didn't show the quarter flat. Let me see if I did. Okay, I didn't. But I can show you. In quarter flat, that's where you have like a quarters deal going on. You call quarters. You, you should never really pay attention to the quarters play art unless you're playing spot drop because if, if you're playing cover four man match, then, you know, th this play art is just irrelevant. You know, and you will see your second defender in in quarter flat. So there's seam flat, there's curl flat, and then quarter flat. Okay. And quarter flat players, they're matched two players. So you got your one, you got your two, your one and your two. So what they will do is if this guy were to run like an out pattern, then he will just match that route and play man to man with that route. Okay. If he were to run, take a route inside, then the number, the quarter flat will carry that route and he will keep his eyes in this area of the field be cognizant of something leaking into the flat in which he will release that that drag pattern by the tight end and then get out and match the number two okay you know and again it's all because everything and the difference is you know if this guy goes vertical against a quarter flat he's not going to match that route as he would in seam flat um he's just gonna what he wants to do is he wants to get hands so if this guy were to go vertical the quarter flat would get hands on this p particular player to impede his process up the field and he would eventually he would carry him to a particular depth and then hand him off to the safety in quarters coverage you know so there's your differences with quarter flat you know quarter flat will match the two he would play that man to man something like this he would reroute him carry him to a certain depth and then hand him off to the safety and in a route like this you know he would want to ride that route inside a little bit with his eyes into the flat being very aware of something leaking into the flat in which case he would release the drag pattern by the number two and then come back out and, and play man to man on that flat pattern so those are your three differences between you know quarter flat seam flat and curl flat now I know people ask questions like well which one's best for what and etc maybe i'll make another video on that um but you know I, I think it's a mistake to play let's say you call a cover three blitz and you're like i don't want to play seam flat i want to play quarter flat 
and you know you'll get into a lot of issues doing that there's a reason why you want seam flats with the cover three blitz as opposed to playing you know curl flat there's a reason why in you know cover four you have quarter flat as opposed to seam flat right so you know i'll leave it at that and um you know i think that's it that i have here i think next i have the tampa two yeah you know we'll just go over this guy really quick now remember in vertical hook when you have a trap coverage called these guys convert to man-to-man -to -man coverage based upon you know a vertical route by the number two well in tampa two they really don't convert to man-to-man -to -man coverage based upon what i've seen you know they just play their re regular vertical hook responsibilities and they want to reroute the number two if they can and kind of impede uh you know you're, you're trying to discourage throws into the seam you want to wall off stuff from that your tampa player your middle uh, linebacker what he wants to do he wants to get depth and he wants to he's going to flip his hips to the passing strength of the formation so in this case despite the fact that it's kind of balanced on both sides the passing strength of the formation would be this side because you have two receivers as opposed to a receiver and a tight end. So, you know, at the snap of the ball, this linebacker is going to look to get depth and he's going to turn his hips this way as he's riding up the field. And in the case where you have something where maybe you have, you know, two out patterns or, you know, nothing looking as if it will threaten the deep middle, then he can flip his hips back to the other side looking for a possible seam pattern by the tight end or a post or etc. So here you see how he flipped his hips to the passing strength and I believe this guy runs like a route to the outside so it's really not a threat. Turns back towards the tight end looking to deal with a possible vertical route by the tight end. You know, your vertical hook kind of rode him up to a particular depth, and then he's playing his zone responsibilities, trying to impede throws to the seam. And, you know, there you go. Now, with a route combination like this, you should see, again, he's going to flip his hips that way as he's going vertical, and when he sees this guy attacking up the field, he should go upfield further than he did before. to discourage any, you know, rocket throws to that guy inside in the seam. And he's playing deeper in, in the deep middle. You know, so if this guy were to come up and run like a post pattern, your Tampa middle linebacker would want to be underneath that throw, inside hip, and, um, of course, discourage any type of throw to this player. Now, granted, you know, it would still be kind of like a mismatch if you were to uh, vertically stretched on the outside, occupying both safeties. You know, in that instance, you can get a receiver one on one with a deep middle linebacker. You know, like a back shoulder throw or, or et cetera, et cetera, would be um, a real problem for the for the middle linebacker. But that's still a hard throw to make. I think I had a video where I showed where uh, the Bears were in Tampa two late in the game, and Michael Vick put the craziest throw deep down the middle to his uh, tight end right by the ear of uh, Brian Urlacher. And it's because, you know, he has his back turn. He's trying to play inside hip on the route. He played it perfectly, you know, but that's the thing. You can't defend a perfect ball. You can play perfect defense, but a perfect throw is indefensible. You know, a perfect defense is a defense that stops, you know, bad throws, errant throws, average throws, okay throws, good throws. But a, a perfect defense can't stop a perfect pass. It, it never can. You know, what I mean by that is you can have a receiver and have like three guys on them, right? In somewhere in the world of mathematics, maybe a one in 2,000 chance, there is a perfect throw that's just indefensible. You know, it would be like a just a throw that you simply cannot defend. But you know, because you have what you wanted, you still want to play perfect defense because, you know, a bad throw would be intercepted there. Whereas in an instance where you have, you know, maybe a receiver here and the corner gets beat badly and he's about here, 
well now even a bad throw can beat that you know if the quarterback were to throw something like here where the receiver has to slow down and turn his hips to catch the ball well you know he can still get it because you have bad defense if you have average defense and maybe the corner is about here well then you know a bad throw could be intercepted there and just a decent throw would be caught there right you know perfect defense where you're underneath it you're almost running the route for him well now a bad pass an average pass even you know an okay pass can all be intercepted you know so again there's no defense for the perfect pass so like even in this you know let's let's do a route like this you know in the corner was inside leverage two man gets upfield and he undercuts the route and he's like here the perfect pass would still be indefensible here you know maybe you know with the corner's eyes looking at the quarterback you throw like back shoulder you know and the receiver stops on his momentum to catch the ball and the corner just kept going you know that would be maybe the perfect pass there so i'll leave it at that um hope you got some insight on the different zones i didn't get get into you know quarter deep deep third deep or deep half i think those kind of explain themselves but if you want me to get into those i can um if there's something i missed i can get into it if you like you know, it's totally up to you just let me know and hope you enjoyed the video